All right, so to start off, we'll introduce ourselves. My name is Ro. Um, I've been doing Square One for about nine months. And I got pretty good at it. <laughs> um, six in the world for average as of today. Uh, I'm Michael Young. Uh, a lot of you know me as not Kevin. Um, hi, guys. I, I've been doing Squan for a really long time. Um, I think my first like claim to fame for Squan was in 2009, where I accidentally won nationals. Um, so that was fun. And um, other than that, my claim to fame would be like a couple NARS before Brandon Lynn decided to actually go to a competition. <laughs> Right, and I'm Tommy. I've been doing Square One for almost three years now, I guess. And I guess most of you know me for having the world record single. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, so I guess we go. All right, so first we'll start off with hardware. Um, this is actually kind of the reason why I didn't do Square One earlier, is because the hardware was so bad. But now with the Qi Square One, things have definitely improved. And, uh, there's still some problems with the cheese square one, um, including uh, stripping screws and springs and stuff like that. So uh, a lot of people have popular modifications, such as the low mod, where you glue the core to make it more stable, uh, spring swap with a Shengshou spring, and including putting in metal nut to prevent the stripping. And one thing I've actually done at the cubicle is I released the cubicle square one, where I do all that stuff for you. So, um, as opposed to the original $12, a cubicle square one is 24, but a lot of work is put into it, and it's definitely an improvement. And that's what all of us use, so. <laughs> and now we'll go to turning styles with Tommy. All right, so there are two main turning styles. There might be a third one I haven't heard of, but there's Western, where you, uh, here. Hold on. Uh, oh yeah, it's on the left right there. So like you alternate between slashing forward and backward, and it's less it allows for less regripping, and it makes some hours easier, I guess. And there's also a Polish turning style, which I used for a while before the Chi came out, and it's like where you always turn forward and you always regrip. It's not as great as Western, but I used it because cues really sucked back then. <laughs> All right, so all three of us use the Vandenberg method, um, which is just kind of the, the basic method. It's kind of like the Frederick of square one. Um, this is just kind of a brief overview of the five steps to it. Um, you do cube shape, and then um, I guess the easiest thing to do is demonstrate in a solve or something. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you're the, you're the pretty one. Um, so the first thing you do is you do cube shape. So it starts in generally not a square square. So you do something so that both layers are uh, square. Then you do, oh, I'm so bad at this now. Um, this, ha, I did it. I don't do this method anymore. So anyway, um, you do CL. So you get all the corners the same. Um, and then you do EO, edge orientation. So then you get both layers to be the same color. So it looks something like that. You do um, corner permutation. So then now all the corners are done. And then you do edge orientation. Huh, edge permutation, yes, words, yes. And that solves the puzzle. So the, those are the five ma main steps to it. Um, for the most part, like, uh, I'll steal it back. Um, for the most part, a lot of it can be done without knowing all the cases, though. Um, for, for example, corner, the, the, the middle three steps, there aren't that many cases, so it's not too bad to learn all of them. Um, edge permutation has 99 cases, which is not necessary at all. I don't think anyone in the world actively uses all of them. Um, I think Brandon knows around 70 or so. You know around 70. I know around 60-ish, and you only know half. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Bing Liang also only knows about 70 or 80. So they're definitely not necessary. 
Um, mostly it's just like making sure you have a solid game plan. So as long, as long as you're doing something productive and you know what you're going to be doing, that's generally fine for um, the, the base improvement of um, using Vandenberg. Okay. So when you're doing a CP, like every single CP alg can be done with a layer misaligned, either, or either the top or bottom or both layers can be misaligned before doing a CP alg here. So this can be done to like preserve blocks because like a JPerm has two blocks, you just like switch them, place it, switch their places basically. So you can um, misalign them to help preserve the layer, preserve the uh, blocks, and get easier EP cases or like get an EP skip. So like doing it out normally without the misalignment would have gotten like a UPerm on bottom, which is not as good as getting a skip. <laughs> <laughs> and. Some tips for look ahead, I guess, for the, with this is um, you always want to pay attention to what the blocks, what blocks are preserved before you like, before you do the alg. So like you can see that these blocks are like on the picture are solved. So like when you do the alg, it'll be solved. And um, for every um, permutation with a JPerm, the headlights are always the headlights are always going to be preserved. So you can look at what look at what those are to give get an idea of what the EP is going to be. Right, and this is uh, CPP, or corner permutation parity. This is, um, I'm the only one here that uses this method, really. <laughs> so um, what it is, is you recognize um, parity before you do the CP alg, which can take a bit of practice to get used to. It took me a while to get used to it. I'm still kind of getting used to it. But the thing is, you only need to learn uh, eight algs, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you learn eight algs as opposed to learning like 50 parity EP algs. And it, it, it makes EP recognition easier because you don't have to look for parity. You don't have to look for uh, yeah, awkward cases. You don't get any awkward cases. And, but like recognition can be a bit tough to like look ahead into the EP step because you can't do the block preservation like you can do for normal uh, CP. But what you can do is try and look at what, what layer it switches parity. It's so like if the top layer switches parity, you can like recognize that you get a parity EP on both layers, which of course, doesn't get parity. You can also look at what PLL is done, or parity PLL is done on each layer with the alg, and that can make uh, look ahead a bit easier. Okay. Uh, so OBL is the thing that I do, and I think I'm the only person in the world who does it, mostly because everybody else doesn't care about it. <laughs> um, so the original idea was uh, floated by uh, my girlfriend, Sherry, who for some reason, like decided, no, I don't want to do like the normal COEO thing. I'm just going to block build. And I was like, but that's so slow. And she was like, it's fine. See, like, look at these particular cases. And I was like, okay, that I guess that makes sense. And it turns out that the the big key here is that uh, OBL, like, once once you get to to um, square shape, uh, yeah. So once you get to square shape, every move that you make that Preserve square square gives you a different OBL, so it's a lot like cube shape in that way, where kind of like there's this giant tree, um, where every time you do something, you want to just kind of get closer and closer to solved. Um, and so, like for example, a lot of you probably know that kite kite is the one one move um, one one move uh, cube shape. And so similarly, this case is the one one move um, OBL. And so you can kind of trace through all of the states and just kind of map what goes to what to figure out what's going on. So for example, this case uh, is two corners missing on both sides. Uh, this can be done by going into this state, which is kind of like um, half and then half with, with a one edge out. And then I'm just going to finish it. But so. In four slices, I can finish all of cube shape or all of OBL, um, and the average is around four, which is really nice compared to the standard method, which is around six. And like as a t typical case, it's really more around eight because most EPs are six moves, um, and so it saves you a lot of moves, which is really nice. And um, because because of the way that because it's a tree, 
you kind of just pick up a couple cases and then you slowly expand from what you know. It's a lot like when you try to learn uh, cube shape at the beginning, you just like start with, okay, here's kite kite, here's like uh, shield shield or whatever, and you just kind of slowly build on what you know until you can get everything. Um, so again, like with cube shape, you don't need to know full optimal. So like I actually don't know full optimal. There are a couple cases that I just don't use optimal for because it's not necessary. Uh, for example, there are two cases that are six slices, which is the worst possible thing. But each of those is, uh, let me set it up. So this is one of them. Thanks. So this is one case, which is like a lot like the other case that we saw earlier. But this time, if you do the single slice that kind of is obvious here, you get into one flip. And so that's, that's seven moves using your normal six move case, and that's fast enough. And so with, with those kinds of cases, it's mostly just having a good game plan. Um, and also, you can use your algs to figure out new cases. So for example, if you take your common um, one flip alg, and you do the first half of it. So here's, here's kind of one flip, right? Here's the edge, and here's the other edge. Oops, there's the other edge back here. Um, and you do the first half, which is one, two, three. You can see that this case, which is kind of like three and five, and then the other side has three and two. This case is a really nice OBL that a lot of cases go into. It's kind of like the kite scallop of OBL. So all you do here is like you, you kind of pivot around this isolated white corner, throw this block down to the bottom, then bring this across, and match it with this block. Oh, I'm sorry, with this block down here, which solves it. And so like, a nice thing about um, OBL is you just kind of take what you know and keep building from it. And that makes learning it a lot easier. And uh, yeah, basically I never do CO anymore because it's not necessary for me. Um, yeah, we'll pass it on. All right, so I'm gonna talk about cube shape parity, which is something that not many people use right now. And it's definitely probably the most difficult, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's developed, was developed by Matthew Sheeran, and pretty much it eliminates parity during cube shape using an alternate algorithm. Uh, so pretty much it's blind tracing from the beginning of your inspection time and counting cycles to an even or odd number, and then deciding which cube shape algorithm to perform. So I'll go into an example next, because that might not make very much sense. But yeah, here's an example. So because square one changes shape, we can't just blind trace as if it's a three by three cube. We have to make reference shapes like the one on top there. That is what I would use as my reference shape to trace the pieces to. So the two uh, cube shapes on the bottom are two different examples where if you blind trace one to the reference shape, you'll get an odd number of cycles. And if I get an odd number of cycles, that's the algorithm you'd perform. And on the right, if you blind trace and get even cycles, that's the algorithm you perform to not get parity. So, yeah, it's very difficult, but I believe it's definitely worth it in the end because, can you go back to the previous slide? The pros, no parity algs, so, and a very little change in move count. On average, it goes down. Yeah. Um, some parity cases, the alg is much different. It's only like one move added to it, or some, is, some are also the same length, so it's really beneficial. Um, you get rid of the parity during your inspection time, so there's no time lost during your solve trying to figure out if you have parity or not, which is one big benefit. Better look ahead into EP because you know you don't have parity. That's something that Tommy mentioned with CP parity. And a lot of lucky cases. Yeah, twice as many. <laughs> the only cons really is that it's a lot of practice and you have to get it under 15 seconds in inspection to actually use in comp. But when you think about three by three blindfolded, um, many people can memo the entire three by three in under 15 when the square one is only what 
16 pieces and there's no orientation, so it's definitely doable, in my opinion. And I'll go back. these are some extra resources for what we went over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. All right. Cubicle square one. <laughs>